is nine o'clock a.m. my time, which means it's time to live code. Make sure I mute you. Hush, there we go. Hi, welcome to live coding with me, Rachel, the sleepiest person. I'm not, I'm sure there's people who are sleepier than me. Um, I am just feeling tired today. Um, make sure that's going. That looks good. Looks like we're going. Waiting on YouTube, which is always a little bit uh, slower. Mm. Hello, Enrique. All right. Yes. Looks good. Hi. Welcome to Live Coding. So we are continuing on a project we've been working on for oof, about six months now. Now I will say it's been six months clock time, but I only work on this project during the stream. So it's really not that much. And for a while I was only streaming once a week. Is that true? Anyway, it's only been like a couple work weeks worth of actual time to work on stuff. Um, I'm not going to suggest that building and deploying a relatively simple ROS bot is going to take uh, six months. I mean, if you only work on it for like two hours a week, maybe. All right, so we have, uh, oh, you can't see that. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to be working on an assistant. Um, I have changed my streaming setup and I can no longer show you web pages and I forgot all about it. That's okay. Uh, that's basically going to be recreating the New York Dialect Times, the New York Times dialect quiz. The New York Dialect Times is nothing, although I would subscribe to it if it existed, probably. Um, and basically the idea is that you answer a bunch of questions about how you say various words, and then uh, the assistant will um, run a classifier and say, okay, here are the three states in the United States um, where people use words most like you use words. Um, hi, Ravi. Hi, Bilal. Uh, uh, in your case, says hot wave here. Yeah, it's been really uh, warm in Seattle as well. So we're, we're pretty far north, and the last couple days it's been getting up to, you know, low 90s, which is around 30 in the other one. Um, which I'm, I'm from the south of the US where it gets real hot and that is in the range of temperatures humans experience, not that hot. But nobody here has built buildings or, you know, uh, businesses around the idea that it will ever be that hot. So um, it's, it's actually probably part of the reason I'm tired. It's just because it's warm and I want to take a nap. The coffee will help, don't you work. Don't work. Do work. Don't worry. Uh, so what have we done so far? A lot. We're almost ready to deploy, honestly. There is just one thing that we are working on before we can start uh, pushing this to be public facing, and that is getting our classifier that takes in the data from the user and runs it, uh, runs the user's responses through the classifier and getting that to work. So we had it working previously. And then we ran into some issues with um, the underlying data I was given as, uh, courtesy of Bert Fox, thank you very much, Bert. Uh, I was given using, uh, it was encoded already, so it's a multiple choice question. And what I got was for each row as a participant, for each question as a, uh, as a column, a number that represented their answer. And I did my best to map those numbers to what I thought the answers would be. And I think I did it wrong. So I got a new copy of the data that did have a data dictionary. So it had a, a record of what that, that matching should be, but also the data was formatted differently and the um, classes that it was sorted into was also different. So we basically had to rebuild our classifier from scratch. Um, and we've got it working at this point where um, you can actually, uh, we've exported the, the classifier and uh, we've got to the point where you can interact with it, um, load it into the assistant and then have the assistant run it. And the problem we were running into was the specific syntax of, well, I was running into, uh, the specific syntax of how to get the, uh, the class that I'd been building that has all the, the code that you need to um, uh, take in the data, encode it correctly, and then run the classifier, and then return the classifier results. Um, 
we were having trouble getting that to run. And at the very end of the stream, a bunch of people, after I'd logged off, were like, instantiate it. So I have done that. I've, I've instantiated the, uh, this class. And I think to start off with, we're just going to run and see how it do. Uh, and one thing I do want to look up just really quickly is Raza Action Server Log. Um, I realized that um, I'm just going to the, the Raza documentation right now um, that uh, run action server. Um, when we were using our assistant, we got sort of like the base log, but we didn't get the full logging, which is actually what I was looking for. So let's run our assistant. Let's see what we got so far. So first we had to change uh, into the directory where dialogue assistant, dialogue assistant chatbot is. Um, and I think it's Raza run actions, oh, L flag. Does that run logging? Sure don't. I just want to run the log. So basically what this is going to do is as we run our assistant, um, so we have the Raza server that's figuring out what the person is saying and converting that into a machine readable format and then picking what the assistant should say next. And then we have the action server, which is running all of uh, the other code. So your action server can run any code you want. In our case, it's running the classifier. It's doing, um, I'm using a form to ask a bunch of questions in order and get the, the responses from that and then take those responses, do some um, uh, data validation on those so that we are matching whatever the, the free form input, the user input to the most like answer in the multiple choice quiz. Um, and all of that's being run in the action server. And I want to, uh, I want to get logging uh, going. <laughs> Let's see. I'm looking up in the in the docs command line interface, uh, and that is raza.com slash docs. Da, 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 start an action server. All right. Optional arguments. H for help, P for port, uh, password, name of the actions server, auto reload, verbose. Um, okay, so the logging options are uh, V for verbose, VV for debugging statements, and quiet, so that does nothing, and that is the, uh, the default. So I'm gonna actually say that we want the whole dang thing because we are debugging today. So this should start our action server um, just on localhost uh, with full on logging. Fantastic. Um, and Enrique says debug in the old version. Yeah, it looks like it's it's also um, debug as an option, uh, but. That's more typing than I want to do. The less typing, the better. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Robbie says it's, it's hot, and also I have a, a high degree. You might even say a terminal degree. Um, yeah. Uh, Bennett says, are there any tutorials for Raza and Asterisk integration? I'm trying to build an IVR voice bot. I don't know what Asterisk is. Uh, <laughs> I would just Google it, um, or user search engine of choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so we have our action server running. Now we can start our assistant uh, and I am going to talk to it in the command line. And if this works, this may be one of the last times we use the command line um, because what I'm hoping we'll be able to do next week, I'm only gonna have step one, be in the directory where your bot is. Uh, I'm only gonna have one day of live coding next week on Wednesday. I'm gonna be out Thursday, Friday. And my hope is that we're gonna be able to get it to the point today where we can just pop it into our Raza X server and y'all can use it and check it out. All right. Oh, another thing I want to add, let me actually make some notes. Uh, that'll work. The other thing I wanna add is start with intro statement. 
Um, so if you've used Sarah on the Razadox, when you open up Sarah um, to the little like purple bubbles on the on the bottom corner, um, she starts by or it starts by saying something. Um, here's what I am. Here's what I do, um, and then lets you know what the privacy policy is going to be. So I want that same thing for this assistant that lets you know how to use it, um, and also lets you know that it's being developed as part of a live stream. So I'm going to be looking at the logs on the live stream, which I think is. Um, a degree of privacy notification that's very important to give users before I, I suggest that they actually use the assistant. So that's the that's the idea. All right. Meanwhile, let's try going through this quiz in our assistant. Uh, do you want to take a quiz? I sure do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rob says, "Where are you going uh, Thursday and Friday?" I'm going nowhere. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm not going to be working. I'll just. I don't know what I'll do. Mm, I may play video games. I may, I've been getting really into um, Legos recently. My husband is, my husband's an Athel, which stands for adult friend of Lego, and he is extremely into Lego, and I've just been finding it very relaxing lately, so I might do that. Who knows, could just take a, a 48 hour nap. Uh, I call that a pill bug, would I? What would I call that a roly-poly? I think I'd call that a roly-poly. Yeah, I don't think I'd call that a pill bug. Hmm. Uh, sweet carbonated beverage, I'd say soda. So this is what the, the quiz is. There's quite a few questions. <laughs> uh, Y'all with an H. Uh, there's quite a few questions. And... Um, the reason that this makes sense as a conversational AI is because when you are um, using this sort of, uh, I'm trying to think of a word other than elicitation instrument. When you're trying to get data, language data from somebody, if you prime them in some way. So if you show them an example that's like what you're trying to get them to say, they're more likely to say things like that example than what they would say if you just like, I don't know, jumped out at them on the street and was like, how do you say this? And then showed them a, a pill bug or a roly poly. Uh, different, do not have that merger. Um, and this sort of free text field from a sociolinguistic, um, you know, experimental, ecological validity standpoint. I know that's just a lot of words. Basically, this is a better way to run a sociolinguistics experiment than to have a multiple choice drop down because you're more likely to get what people actually say. Uh, no word for this. Yeah. Uh, take a break, recharge well, thanks. Uh, sorry, I don't know about video games. I... In graduate school, I made a switch to only playing nonviolent video games because I used to be I used to be uh, really into MMOs. I was uh, the main tank for a very hardcore reading guild, um, and it took a lot of time. And also, I discovered that I find violent video games very stressful, so I just switched to completely nonviolent video games, and it helped my mental health. Rachel, you're having a hard time staying on topic today. Yeah, <laughs> sure am. Okay, we can do this. Night before Halloween. I don't have a word for that. Uh, and because we're using fuzzy matching to do data validation, there should not be a problem if I have a reasonable number of spelling errors. Let's call that a sub. Mm -hmm. uh, Enrique says, I was able to clone my dad's voice with Tacotron 2. Oh, and NVIDIA's new, new thing that they talked about. Oh, that's neat. Well, I guess it depends on how you feel about the person whose voice you're cloning, uh, how, how that makes you feel. Uh, access road. Uh, Robbie says, what game do you like to play? Um, right now I'm playing Ooblets, which is, it's sort of like um, Animal Crossing, but also there's a little bit of a like, you raise little creatures and they compete with each other, but it's nonviolent. They have dance-offs, which I think is extremely cute. Uh, tennis shoes. And it's been very relaxing. Big road, I'd call that a highway. Uh, Osvaldo says, uh, Congrejo, Cameron in Spanish. Is that like, um, 
what you'd call the like little little roly polies. They're like, they're, um, they look a little bit like trilobites if that's helpful. Except they're very small and then they like clip up into a little ball. Uh, they live like under rocks and under under you know various things. Uh, actually, there's people who keep them as pets who who raise isopods and like they they breed them to have all like fun different colors. Uh, yard sale. Wow, I have the attention span of uh, a squirrel right now. Traffic jam, rubbernecking. And I'm not reading all these answers because I've, uh, reading all these questions entirely because I have taken this quiz many times at this point. Many, many, many times. Uh, and once we get into Raza X, um, we'll, we'll automate doing some end-to-end -end tests that should be a little bit faster <laughs> than me typing things out. Um, but also I know for many of you, this is the first time you've seen this assistant lawyer boy. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this is a good idea of what it looks like. Oh, another thing that we might add, uh, just while I'm doing ideas is how many questions left. I don't know if there's a way to do that with forms. Yeah, that might be a thing that we do a little bit in the future, but I don't want to add too many things that our assistant can do before I have it in front of people. Um, so at Raza we have this principal, Kitty Corner, uh, or Catawampus, but I know for a fact that that is not in the, um, the training data. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so um, at Raza we have this principle of assistant design called conversational driven development. And basically the idea is once you have your prototype, which is what I'm working on now, it does like the bare minimum functionality. Then you get it in front of test users who will run through it. And then you use their interactions to improve the assistant. So if people are asking a bunch of questions about like, I don't know, where does the data come from? Or um, how many questions are left? Or I'm bored or saying things in the middle of this long list of questions. And then update my model and then update my assistant. Uh, so doing CICD with two humans in the loop, <laughs> your user, and then you as a developer. Uh, I call that Firefly. Would I? Or Lightning Bug. Yeah, Firefly. Probably Firefly. That's what my mom says. That's Verge. Uh, I'll call that a brew through, which is a very localized term. Oh no. Mmm. <laughs> uh, Cybermentor1234 says, I literally suck at coding. Oh, uh, that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you'll get better. Uh, last video. Looks like some network instability. Um, yeah, so we, we've, uh, I've been struggling quite a bit recently with my ISP, um, and I think I'm going to try switching ISPs and see if that, that helps, which thankfully I'm in a place where there are multiple ISPs, uh, and it's not just a monopoly and I have no choice. It's a water fountain, which was true, uh, the last couple places I lived. All right, so here are all my answers, uh, which I'm... It worked! It worked! Yee! Fantastic! Okay, so here are all my answers in order, which I may or may not keep that in the final assistant. Um, but here, this is the important part, here are the results of my uh, assistant. So you sound like you come from, so this first one is Massachusetts, extremely wrong. The second one is Washington State, which is... Mm, where I am currently, but I do not have a lot of dialect features from, so that's sort of an interesting result. And then Alabama, which is probably the closest um, dialectally to, to me. Um, fun fact, my uh, dad went to the University of South Alabama, so that's not the one that's tied. <laughs> Roll Tide is a different university in Alabama. Um, yeah. All right, and it looks like it's back for everybody. Fantastic, good to see that. Uh, uh, Robbie says, uh, in my childhood I ran to catch fireflies. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, fireflies are really interesting. There's a, um, 
uh, I was on a podcast recently and they asked me to recommend a film uh, and there's a David Attenborough um, documentary called Light on Earth that talks about different forms of bioluminescence and um, uh, fluorescence uh, and there's like a whole thing about fireflies that was extremely interesting so if you like fireflies I'd recommend the documentary. It works. Um, let's check our logs just to just to see the the whole process. Um, so here's the uh, yeah. Let's just walk through it all. I think that'll be that'll be helpful. So going all the way to the top. Each of these little sections is the assistant validating one of the slots. So we're using a form. And the way that you store user information during a conversation that you want to refer to backwards are called slots. So these are like variables that you will set with information that your user provides, usually some sort of entity that you've extracted from the text. Um, and uh, so this is the way our, our conversational went, our conversation, our conversation went on the back end. So um, we started by uh, when we said, hey, we want to run this, ex we, want to, we want to do the quiz, it started the elicitation form, which is what asked all those questions. Um, so the form was activated. Um, and if we'd started like, I say roly poly and I want to run the elicitation form, um, hopefully roly poly would have been mapped to a slot and we wouldn't have asked somebody about it again. So not super useful in a quiz context, but something like um, someone says, I want a table for two and you need other information from them, you can save that information, I want a table from two, and then ask using a form, okay, what cuisine do you want? How far away should the restaurant be? Um, I guess these days um, people aren't going to restaurants, hopefully. Um, so maybe not the most relevant example right now, but that's the general idea. Uh, yeah, so uh, here we request the next slot. Um, so we, uh, asked for the information and then, uh, that, you know, question asking bit, uh, finished. And then here is sort of the, uh, I know the, the line wrapping is a little bit hard to read, um, but we have a form so you can see that this is using forms from the Raza SDK. Um, and this is something that's going to change in Raza 2.0. So forms, this way to ask a bunch of questions and get a bunch of answers, is going to be moving into Raza OS core. Well, I don't know if it's going to be in the core NLU, but it's moving into Raza open source. So you don't need to um, run this separately through the SDK, just like a, an organizational difference. And uh, Raza 2.0 is in alpha now. Um, so if you want to play around with it, please do. Um, if you have any issues, please, please, please let us know. Feel free to file an issue on GitHub and we will look into it. Okay. Uh, so, da, 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 trigger message. Okay, so they're, they're saying, okay, we're pretty sure that you uh, wanted to start the form. Uh, here's a number of different things we could have been doing. We could have been asking, is our assistant um, are you a bot? We could have been asking that to the assistant and uh, the um, the intent classifier is pretty sure that wasn't it. So this is like a 1% probability that they thought that it might be that. Um, or we might have been saying no and the assistant thought there was like half a percent probability that it might be that. So these, all of these uh, numbers together, sorry, all of the ones under the intent ranking together should equal to about one because it's a probability distribution. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the assistant thinks that we were saying yes when we said, yes, I want to start the quiz. So that's um, all of this block is the assistant figuring that out. Uh, and then this is the first, uh, the first question that it asked was about what you call the little insect that rolls up. Um, and all of the information that we give the assistant gets the single slot uh, sorry, the single entity in form. So in form is just a broad entity that's like, I'm giving you some information. And the specific information that we're getting out, um, if we had like a short list of things that it could be, we could have used entities and then provided training examples. For this, because I wanted to accept 
any information that somebody put in, um, I actually just took all of the text that they replied to the form with and then saved that and then did data validation separately. So rather than treating them as like, um, a database lookup and trying to match something, I was like, okay, they're going to say something and then I'll deal with that um, later in a different part rather than viewing that as part of the, the dialogue system. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm telling a lot of fun stories, I think, today. Um, so that's this bit where it was trying to figure out roly poly. So um, it extracted the, uh, the slot bug. So that's what bug is the name of the slot that will take the text of whatever was the answer to this question. For each of the questions, there is a specific slot. So again, this is a way of storing information that you want to use later in a conversation about a person. Um, and this from text mapping is what means that it's just gonna be all, all of the information. So I'm basically what I'm just talking about here is, is going through the logs and figuring out what's happening. Uh, so we successfully extracted Roly Poly, this text uh, for the requested slight, the requested slot bug, and then we validated it. Um, and it looks like the validation was correct and we just stored Roly Poly and that was one of the multiple choice answers. And then we do the same thing. So for beverage, it's uh, the the intent classifier says, oh, I'm pretty sure this is uh, a, um, uh, a firm intent. No, we would expect that to be an inform intent. Um, but I don't think it matters a whole bunch. Or is this just checking that the form is still, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so this line is just saying the form is active. And the reason that the form is active is that we said yes, that we want to start the quiz a while ago. So I'm guessing we're going to see that at every question. Uh, and then here, uh, so here there actually is an entity extracted. So when I was first prototyping the bot, um, instead of just taking in any of the text that somebody inputs and then saving that and doing validation later separately, um, I did do the entity uh, classification bit. So if we look at our NLU data here, under uh, inform, I had a lot of examples of things that you might call that type of bug. You might call it a potato bug or roly poly, wood bug, pill bug, uh, slater, doodle bug, potato bug. Um, and all of these examples of entities, if I use them somewhere in my um, conversation with the assistant would be tagged, oh, that's an entity, that's something that um, I know what to do with. That's like, a, basically it's a mapping between a specific string and some category that the string falls into, more or less. Uh, and I did the same for beverage. So you can see I have soda, I have pop, and I have Coke as examples of those entities. So here, the reason Roly Poly wasn't identified as an entity above is because it has a space in it when I trained my entities and it did not have a space in it when I typed it into the assistant. Um, but the data validation was able to correctly match this to the example, um, to the, the multiple choice question from the quiz. Uh, and then the reason that we did get beverage as an entity, so here you can see entity beverage, start zero and four. Those are the character indices where it begins and ends in the input text. Um, and you can see it's, it's mostly confident that that's that entity. Um, so it's about 71% uh, weight. And then it's the value of soda. And soda is one of the examples that I, I provided here. So that's why we have an entity here. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of entities in our assistant because I only really did them for the original options for the bug category, the original options for the soda category, and the original options for the um, um, y'all second person plural category. Uh, uh, Robbie says, this is the first time I've heard this type of bug's name. Yeah, it's something that, that varies a lot between regions, which is why it's a good question to ask in a dialect quiz. Uh, okay, so 
we uh, extracted all of the information and then we validated it uh, and we mapped soda to the beverage slot. And then each of these slots is what's going to be used um, is going to be used as an input uh, variable to our assistant for the classification to return the most likely states. Okay, the next slot is second person plural. So that's like y'all, you guys, yins, um, you perhaps. Um, and so the form is still active because we said yes a while ago. So here uh, the text is y'all that was extracted as an entity, the second person plural. Um, and uh, it was extracted for the requested slot and it was validated and saved. Same thing, caught, caught. You can see that this one does not have an entity. This is the point at which I stopped adding entities and started using that sort of um, slot filling and then fuzzy validation after the fact. Uh, and uh, validated, etc. So all of these are more or less uh, gonna be similar. You see no word for this and then it was extracted no word for this. I'm trying to find one where I said something that needed to have uh, crawfish crawfish that needed to have a slightly different um, hmm interesting so this validation should not be exactly the same text I put in there might be something up with our validation I'm gonna have to check that out because it looks like it's not what it should be doing is selecting something from the uh, uh, it should be selecting something from the list of multiple choice answers that we provided. Um, there's a JSON I imported last week, if you remember that, or Wednesday. Um, so let me see if the validation happens at the end. Although it does look like the validation is happening in the middle. Validating from text, Firefly, Verge. Okay, okay, so it looks like Ah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. It is being validated. We just don't see the uh, the information about the validation until the end. So you can see, um, I think I said I had, I don't have a word for this for rain sun. So this is what do you call it when it's raining and sunning at the same time. Um, and that was validated to the closest answer, which was I have no term or expression for this. And I think I also spelled brew through a little differently. Uh, and it was corrected to THRU. Yeah, so you can see I spelled it B-R-E-U-T-H-R-O-U-G-H, and it was corrected to B-R-E-W-T-H-R-U, which is what our classifier expects. Fantastic. Okay, so I think everything is pretty much working as I expected. Uh, time to gussy up our system a little bit before I show it to people. Um, I think I'm going to leave this as it is, so this intent in form. Although right now it's not doing much. So the only thing that the inform intent is doing, the only place it's being used is in the form, I think. Um, and right now the form is not extracting entities, it's just returning all the text and then it's fuzzy matching that's matching that text to the closest answer. Uh, Yeah. Um, other things I think I can do, I think I can get rid of the classifier XGBoost1, because right now we're only using the KNN classifier. So I don't think we actually need that. Um, let's look at stories. So right now all of our stories start with the user greeting and then the assistant is uttering something and what I want to do is change it up a little bit so instead of us saying hi to start the quiz I want the quiz to start by telling you what's up and also letting you know about the weird privacy thing um, so what I'm going to do is actually look up the code for Sarah. So Sarah is the assistant that we use in the Raza docs to help you find things. Um, 
it's oh, it's a work in progress. Uh, but uh, Sarah starts the conversation by um, saying what it can do and um, what the privacy policy is. So I'm gonna find the source code for that. Uh, also, Sarah is an anagram of Raza. It's uh, S A R A. Mm -hmm. uh, Rogoff says, uh, "Sorry, I joined late. Does this entity mapping uh, internally use the die architecture?" That's a great question. So, as I mentioned, I've been working this on this for about six months, and I don't believe Diet was released at the point that I started. So, um, in my configs, you can see that I'm not actually using uh, using Diet. Um, it is something that I could do, but I'm, I'm not not just now. All right, so I'm on the the Sarah blog post. Uh, there we go, and I'm going to take a look at the code, which unfortunately you can't see. So it's actually right here in, in another window. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I, why don't I just copy and paste the, uh, the link? The reason I can't just copy and paste the link is because I'm on two separate co computers, Raza HQ, Raza Demo. Um, but I'll share the link so you can take a look at the uh, code yourself and see what I'm trying to replicate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna see the stories in here because that is what's going to, uh, so that's gonna be under data and then, ooh, <laughs> this, is a, this is an older one, huh? And then core probably. Ooh, hmm, interesting. Uh, purpose of the repo is to showcase it. You can find planned expansions for Sarah. Um, Data core contains stories. Okay, so the um, the setup of this assistant is a little bit funky, and I'm guessing it's because it was built uh, or it was initially built a while ago. So let's see. Step one gets started, I guess. So let me just copy and paste the the text that I have, and we can we can go through it. Well, uh, that's not ideal. Uh, one sec. So here is the stories that they have uh, right at the top. And the, the stories are, you can see that there's a lot of them um, about different things that people might be looking for, different uh, pieces of information that they might have provided. So as you can see that there's some slots in here that are filled. Um, you can see that there's a, a bunch of askins. So there is a, a much more uh, complex assistant than the, um, there we go. Sarah is a much more complex assistant than the one that we have um, here. And you can also see that the, okay, listen, we're not in stories. <laughs> We are in the wrong file, so let's go to the other file. Data, stories, okay, great. Uh, and this is where you sort of lay out the things that your assistant can do. Um, okay, so it looks like uh, there's this get started step one, which is something that the user does but doesn't say, and that's what prompts this action greet user. Um, that's what gives you the, the information about the privacy policy and what Sarah is. So let's um, dig in through the, the repository. Uh, what is this get started step one? 
Uh, Rakab says, that looks like a promising architecture. I started watching the whiteboard uh, sessions as you suggested yesterday. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad you found them helpful. Um, yeah, no, diet is great. The main reason I haven't been working on it yet is it has... So I I film these on, on Windows. I, I develop on, on Window and WAC mainly these days. Um, and there's specifically some TensorFlow dependencies that are not supported for Windows. And the team knows and they'll get to it eventually. Um, so uh, that's just like a, a point of frustration for, for me. Uh, Abdullah says, does Rasa support non-English languages? Uh, and languages that have right to left reading. So that would be like Arabic. Um, yes. Uh, so there are quite a few demos um, that different members of the Raza community have built. Um, basically, the fewer computational linguistics resources there are for the language that you're working in, the more work you're going to have to do yourself to create those. Um, but yes, we are we are language agnostic. We should work with any language. Um, Osvaldo says, it looks slow in the model response. Can diet be better at that? Oh, that's a great point. So there's definitely a little bit of a lag. Um, and the reason that that's happening when I'm in the command line specifically is because there's a way that Windows resolves like requests to local hosts that introduces like a two to 300 millisecond lag. Um, there's a way to fix it, but it's like a little complex and I've just been too lazy to do it. But there's a lot of discussion about that in the forums and that is a Windows specific thing. Um, it is not the, the assistant. It's the way that the requests are being handled a little bit slow. Uh, good catch, though. Uh, Enrique says, um, yes, with Spacey. So if your language is supported by Spacey, that's going to be a big uh, uh, a big boost. Spacey does sort of more low-level NLP stuff um, in Python. Also an open source project. Really, really good. Um, the, the Explosion team does great work. Um, but they support, I want to say, like seven or eight languages total. And if you're not one of those seven or eight, uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit more work. Um, we also have some some Chinese language tooling specifically. Ooh, I don't know if it's simplified or traditional or if it handles both, but we do have some some implementations that include um, some some stuff for Chinese. Uh, Rogab says, "Is Sarah open source?" Sure is. Uh, that's the that's the source code. I want to say Apache 2.0, but double check the license. Uh, and yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Trezan. Harrison? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, Sarah's a demo of Raza and open source. And you can uh, chat with Sarah in our documentation. Okay, so. Step one, get started. Um, so there is this thing that comes from the user and I'm trying to figure out where it come from and what it do. So, uh, I right now I'm just clicking through through the repository, looking at different stuff. So I got it working so that you only see my um, uh, that. You only see the, the IDE, wow, um, a while ago. And as it turns out, that means that I can't, sh sh by a while ago, I mean yesterday, um, after I, I finished streaming. And that means that you cannot see the web pages that I have in front of it, unfortunately. So that's something I need to work on. <laughs> I need to figure out how to do that a little bit better. Uh, okay, so it's not in data NLU. Let's check out the, um, domain.yaml, okay. Different things, the session config, the intent, so those are things that the user might say. Um, lots of intents, various slots. And the specific thing I'm looking for is get started step one, responses from the, uh, Excuse me, responses from the assistant. So that's when, if there's ever, if you're looking through a config file or a domain file rather, and it has utterance in front of it, that's something your assistant can say. Sorry, utter, not utterance. Uh, and then a list of all the actions and then the form. So where does get started step one? Okay, so it is an intent. Hmm. 
it's an intent. So is this something that's just sent to the assistant by the servant? Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back into data NLU. Uh, and I guess look at the general. So this is intent affirm. And we're looking again for get started. So it's not there. Hmm. <laughs> um, uh, Rob says, uh, Windows, do you know if uh, WSL2 will also have TensorFlow challenges? That's the little Linux, local Linux VM in Windows, right? I'm just going to look that up real quick. Mm -hmm. Architecture, WSL, blah, 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 blah. Uh, adding full system. Oh yeah, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, no, it should. Mm, it shouldn't have the TensorFlow issues. It might still have the weird latency issues. Um, but once you get your assistant on Raza X, um, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and there's hopefully next week. I've got a little installation uh, video for for Windows 10 on how to get Raza X running, um, which will be a big help. And I wish I had a while ago. Uh this one says, what's the best way to work with numbers and submenu, like IVR? What is IVR? I'm just Googling it. Uh, a mortgage company? That cannot be it. Visual IVR. Interactive voice response. That makes a lot more sense. Probably it's interactive voice response, huh? Um, Uh, uh, Rob says, yeah, Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay. Um, my apologies for the, for the lay. I'm not ignoring you. There's a little bit of, um, uh, a gap between where I am in time and where y'all are in time watching. Um, best ways to work with numbers and submenus like IVR. Oh, so people will say like, I want option one sort of thing. Um, if you really want that exact flow, but text based, maybe buttons uh, would be would be my recommendation. So that's a way where you have multiple options that your user can choose, and they can just select the button that is most relevant to them in uh, in the visual interface. So I think that's going to be the most similar. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so oh, and Ralph says interactive voice response. Yes, thank you. Uh, I wish there was less lag because I would I would have to look up fewer things. Y'all are very helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, and Enrique says, is it a built-in intent? <laughs> Maybe. What's a built-in intent? Raza built-in intent. Mm -hmm. Connect to Alexa. Oh, that's my blog post. <laughs> Uh, also, I should update that. I don't think it's going to work any longer because I think uh, Alexa has blacklisted and Grok silently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, press one for dot, dot, dot. Alan says, ah, thank you. Yes, um, yeah, probably buttons is what I would say is, is the closest. Um, and then I guess you could put the the number on the button, or you could just say what the like, the thing is that it will go to, you know. Like instead of having a button that's like a one, oh, there's one that says without button. Mmm. I mean. I would probably do it, uh, I would probably have set it up a conversation where the assistant says, hi, welcome to blah, 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 blah. Uh, what department would you like to speak to? And then not say anything. And then the user can um, enter in text and you can do pretty much just the same thing that, that I did with the, the fuzzy matching or you can just treat it as an entity um, and then slot fill and then use the contents of that slot to figure out where to direct them. 
um, without having that sort of options presenting at all. And if they say something that's not a department, then you can trigger a turn that's like, um, oh, and here's a list of departments. Because um, at least in my experience, when I'm calling um, or when I'm interacting with a system like that, I kind of know who I want to speak to already. Uh, so having that as like the first option to speed up the interaction might be uh, a little bit nicer for the end user. Yeah, I think that's that's probably what I would do. Uh, in general, to answer your question about numbers, um, for, for extracting mem numbers, we recommend duckling, um, which is, you know, it's going to be a little bit more robust, a little bit faster. It's, it's rule-based, and you don't have to build the rules, which is nice. Uh, Jason says, uh, form for free text. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, usually you want to use a form when you're collecting multiple parts of text. So uh, multiple multiple slots at the same time. Um, so the reason I'm using a form here is I could put it in my stories um, like so, and then have like the text, the question, the person answers the question, text, the question, the person answers the question, text, the question, answers the person. Um, you see how that could get repetitive, uh, and doing it in a form is just keeps things a little bit tighter and neater, and neater and a little bit more modular. So it's easier to edit down the line. Um, yeah. So I would say maybe a form, if you were doing something like, uh, you wanted to collect the department and then the specific person or like the department and the reason that they're calling or something like that and you have multiple pieces of information you want to pass on to the next person. Mm -hmm. uh, Oswaldo says, probably a better idea to use a rule-based system. It's simple, easy to implement. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, rule-based systems absolutely have their, their place. Um, yeah, if you were trying to really recreate the recreate the experience so i can imagine for like a game or something you really want to recreate that plus one for experience how would i do that probably using a story for each like path that you might go down so um, so having a story that's like, the assistant asks, who do you want to talk to? And then you provide, you know, slots, uh, and the assistant's like, great, connecting you to slot form now. Um, maybe, I don't know. There's, there's lots of ways you could sort of get a kind of a similar experience. Does that make sense? Um, as well as says, it's just number to read, uh, numbers to read in a predefined workflow. Yep. Um. And there's many applications where you do not need the whole uh, NLU bells and whistles. Um, I would say it's going to be probably nicer for users to interact with sort of um, more natural conversation if this is not a type of system that they have used before. Um, so maybe mm, I'm trying to think of, of a specific population of users who probably isn't going to be familiar with this type of voice interface. Um, Probably like deaf users may may have done that with like um, the you know the 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 keyboard transcription system possibly um, may not be something they're super familiar with. Um, I imagine there there are age cohorts who have never never called a system like that. So maybe um, very old or very young folks. Um, yeah, I don't know. a little little tangent. More coffee. Uh, Jason says, could you implement something with numbers in your project? Huh. I don't know where it would really fit. I guess the one place I would, I would maybe add it would be at the end, which would be like, how would you rate this experience? One to five or, um, press one if your state, if you feel that this result was accurate, press two if you don't. Um, oh, you know what? Massachusetts was probably on account of tennis shoes. Sorry, that just, that just figured, I just figured out where, where that was coming from. Um, yeah, so that might, might be a thing. I don't know. I don't know that it really makes sense with the, the assistant as it is now. Um, yeah, back to the question that I had for myself earlier, which is how do, what is this getting started step one? It is an intent, 
Uh, so let me look at... So we figured out it was intent, and I'm going to try and figure out where it is in. Maybe this MLU markdown? <laughs> How to get started. That's not quite the question I'm asking. Uh, Lookups, location and products. That's probably not going to be okay. So that's just like a, a list of locations in the location text. And I'm guessing products is just going to be a list of yeah. That's just a list of, of products that that Raza builds. Chit chat. Let me see. By whom were you built? <laughs> that's a uh, that's a very uh, sort of old fashioned way of saying that. Let's see if it's a, it's not an FAQ. <laughs> uh, it's not an LU, it's not in general. Okay, so how do we know what's in this intent? Maybe it's an action. Let's see, so we have actions, we have config, which it looks like a bunch of, getting a bunch of stuff from the OS environment. Hmm, intent description mapping. Okay, oh, this looks like it's for the for the FAQs, which is not really what I'm looking for. Requirements, actions. Nope, that's that's just the requirements text. Um, maybe it's in the init. Nope, that's empty. Hmm. <laughs> Mysterious. Okay. Um, I thought that this would be pretty straightforward to do, and I think maybe it's not super duper. Just checking up setup. I think this is setting up the assistant for the first time, it looks like. Yes, it does. Uh, uh, Jason says, numbers are widely used in projects with WhatsApp. I'm using with form, but I've had problems when a person enters a number outside the range. Oh, um, yeah, you could. So what I would do is um, I would include a data validation step. Um, so go over here. Um, so when I run my form, I have, um, I'm just going to say right now, <laughs> the validation that I'm doing here is a little bit funky. So what I'm doing is I actually have a creation a function that creates validation functions um, where it basically goes through and does the fuzzy matching I mentioned and it finds, so it creates validation function, creates a function, <laughs> the green validation function creates a function to validate each slot that will go through and look up in um, this, this database dictionary that I created previously. Um, it will find the closest answer using fuzzy matching. You don't care about all that. Um, but then I uh, create all of those functions to do that. Um, and then I, uh, uh, once the, the, the form is finished, I do that. So if you wanted to create um, a validation function for, um, let's say each of your slots to check that it's in range, this might be one way that you could do it. Um, is there a more elegant way to do this? Listen, probably, but this one works, so we're just gonna leave it for now. Uh, yeah. Oh, Alan, thank you. Uh, Ian, Raza, you can bypass the NLU model by sending a message that starts with slash. So e.g. slash greet. In this case, the web page actually sends this message on the user's behalf when they open the chat widget. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Hmm. Gotcha. Okay, so so what's that say? What, just to, to rephrase that, so instead of sending text that the NLU extracts stuff from, you're just like, hey, NLU, here's the answer, use this answer and do something with it. Um, so that sort of like, here's the answer, just do something with it, is being done by the website that's hosting the assistant. And then the assistant is starting with um, uh, the 
the assistant thinks that the user's already said greet, and then it's responded to that greeting um, using the, the information, uh, like the privacy policy and what it do and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, that makes sense. I don't know how to do that in Rosa X yet. That sounds like a fun project to do next. Um, yeah, I think it might be worthwhile for us to spend some time poking around. So, okay, let's come on back. Let's review. Um, there's a couple things I need to do. So one thing that I need to do is right now I cannot connect this assistant to Raza X because I have all the uh, Raza X expects when I uh, connect a Git repository that this, the stuff that's inside the dialect spot is going to be on the top level of that repository. So one thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this is on the top level um, and then get, I'll do this off camera, I'll, I'll set up a Raza X instance and get it running and then connect my assistant. And then the next thing I wanna do is I want to figure out a good way to communicate the privacy information to users. I don't know if there's a way for when a tester starts a Raza X uh, conversation, a good way of um, letting them know that information ahead of time. But I think, I'm thinking back, I'm pretty sure there's a little field where you can put a message in. I'm like 80% sure that that's the case. So I think that that's what we'll do. So when we, when we have people test the assistant, um, I will, including the message that your responses might be shown in the live stream, just so folks know, because I, I don't want that to be a, a surprise for anybody. Um, okay, so I think that's what we'll do. Um, Enrique says, if Alan says so, it must be. Uh, yeah, I'm inclined to trust Alan on this. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're ready to start uh moving into raza x and i don't have to type out the whole dang conversation in shell every time um so next time we're gonna get set, stuff set up in raza x um i want to give myself little notes um i want to start by setting up end-to-end -end text tests uh into raza x y'all i'm so excited to be working in raza x uh it's gonna be so good <laughs> Uh, in Raza X, set up tests, uh, and then hopefully by the end of next Wednesday, our test will be set up and I can share it with y'all and you can play around with it, take the quiz, um, give us some real training data, and then we can actually start the conversation-driven part of conversation-driven development, because I think the prototype is good to go, a mere six months after starting, which again, not that many hours of continuous work. And there was a big, there were a couple of big detours in there where I just like struggled with Docker for a while and I did not need to do that. And then I built like an Alexa integration um, that I'm not using right now and don't plan on using. But uh, yeah, I did a bunch of, about the, of other steps in the interim. Yeah. Uh, Nerzan says, an approach with numbers would be interesting. I can put this subject in your radar on the future. I saw something in the alpha vision, uh, alpha version 2.x that addresses free text. Oh, um, like the end-to-end the -end stuff um, without intents. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I think that there could definitely be, um, yeah, there could definitely be space for, for something about like how to, how to handle numbers. Um, I'm also working on, a little, a little sneak peek. I'm working on a, uh, a project that's going to be more just like short tutorial how-to videos, like our installation videos. Um, I think that could be a good topic for like a short how-to video as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll stick it on my radar. In fact, I'll put it on the, uh, the content ideas uh, spreadsheet we have internally. Uh, and thanks for letting me know about uh, the fact that that's very popular on WhatsApp. I don't have I ever used WhatsApp? I don't think I've ever used WhatsApp. It's just not super popular in my little social circle. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Thank you for the suggestion. All right, this has been uh, a pretty good live coding. I changed nothing and it worked. 
<laughs> which is uh, ideally how I want all my coding sessions to go. Um, and is also about what I have the brain for right now. So next time, oh, actually there is one thing I wanted to do. I'm just gonna take a quick little break. Quick little break, go to my config. Um, so no domain. I don't know why config and domain are so confusable for me, but they are. Uh, so one thing that I did want to update is this one. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's just some like weird additional spaces in the printout that I want to get rid of. Um, I don't know if you noticed this. Let's see. Nope. 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 Ah. Uh, control tilde. There we go. I don't know if you noticed this in the the output, but there's some like indents, there's an extra space here, and I want to go through and make sure that I just tidy that up. Okay, no, yeah, it is doing all of them. I was like, where's tennis shoes? Did we did we not actually do all of them? I think we are doing all of them. Okay, fantastic. Um, whether or not I include that by default going forward in conversations is a discussion I'm having uh, with myself. So I just want to undo all this. There we go. All right. Uh, whether or not I want to include this, um, telling people what all their answers were at the end of the quiz or not, is, again, just something I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about. Because, like, another thing that might be fun would be to be like, hey, in the original training data, 10% of people said Verge for this, or like 4% of people said Brew Through for this. Um, and I think that could be like fun information. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to give the joint probability though, because that could lead to de anonymization. And because we're binning rare answers into other, I'm not super worried about that either. Although, because some answers will be binned into other and other was not an option for all questions, some people will just get 0% of people have said this, um, which is a little bit of a, a funky thing to tell somebody. So that might be something that we add. But again, for the future, it works. It do what I want it to do. And the next stage is to get people actually using it. So Ross at X. Next turn. Next turn. Next Wednesday. Next week. All right. Uh, da, da, da. uh, Benjamin said, can you show me how to get the bot to start the conversation? Yeah, really good question. So we were just, um, just talking about that. And the way to do it would be to have when your assistant launches, silently send a slash greet on the user's behalf to your assistant, um, is what, what Alan was talking about above. And that will, uh, to the user, it looks like the assistant will be starting the conversation, but to the assistant, it will be look like, it will look like, oh, I've gotten a greeting, now I should do the rest of the stuff I do. So that's the that's the general idea there. Um, and that's also, I think, a good idea to add to the list of tutorial videos that I wanna do. I, mm, no promises about timeline on that, by the way. <laughs> I have a lot of tutorial videos I wanna do. Uh, how to get assistant to start. Because uh, you don't, you don't, mm, so my, my principle on this is that I don't want to have an assistant start a conversation with a user until the user has indicated that they are interested in having an interaction, if that makes sense. I know that there's some, there's been some, some discussion of different systems like starting conversations based on um, you know, you walking into the room and the assistant's like, oh, I hear your footsteps. Hi, Ron, or whatever, whatever it is. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> Not a fan of that as a, as a design philosophy. Um, feels very invasive. Uh, and I want control over communicating with uh, systems. So, yeah. Uh, that's the way to do it, but you'd probably want to do that on some trigger that the user has provided, like, I'm ready for the conversation now. Please, let's start. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, uh, thank you for sticking with me today with my many, many tangents and uh, hopefully fun asides. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Um, uh, and I, I don't know what else to say. I've got a lot of video editing to do, did I? 
I will see you all next Wednesday. I'm gonna be off next Thursday, Friday. I'll post about it in, in YouTube and update my um, my Twitch schedule, and I will see y'all then.